Hello, everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to today's stream. I have fellow photographer and visual artist Anna Neubauer with me. Welcome to the live stream. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's It's been a long time coming. I feel like every time I see you in the chat, I'm so happy. And <laughs> even more happy now to have you here. And we're going to talk about some of your projects, I believe. And you're going to show us some of your amazing photographs. If you are watching us on YouTube, please come over to Behance. We have a chat in Behance where you can ask questions, um, whatever you want to know about photography and inspiration and creative work. So join us there and yeah, let's jump right in. So do you want to introduce yourself real quick? So yes. <laughs> people that don't know who you are. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Anna. I'm an Austrian photographer and I'm based in London. Yes. It's really funny that we're both German speaking people having an English stream. I just want to point it out <laughs> because maybe people are thinking that and we're well aware, but we're going to power through. Um, <laughs> So you brought us some photos and projects and I'm really excited because I really like your photos Thank and I know much. that you've been part of the residency fund, right? That was amazing. Um, it was just incredible. Yes. Are you going to, are we going to see some of the photos you took for that as well? Yes. Oh, perfect. Because <laughs> I, I love that project. I think I included one or two. Perfect. <laughs> then let's um, jump right in. So... Yeah, um, the ones on the left and right are from the fund. Um, I shoot a lot of um, projects centered around people with visible differences. Mm. Um, yeah. Can you explain, like, how did that come about? What was the first time that you were interested in showing something like that? And why is that important to you? Um, I'm from a really small town, so I grew up in a town with little to no diversity. Mm. And But I grew up in a family that is somewhat diverse. So I was always surrounded by people of all backgrounds and all skin colors. Um, and I, I've been annoyed by um, the lack of diversity and inclusion in all kinds of media. Mm. Um, and I think it took me forever to kind of realize what kind of power I have as a photographer to change things. And then I um, was working for a client and I think it was the first shoot, uh, first of many. Uh, so I was a bit like insecure, um, didn't really know what to do. And then I think mid shoot, They turned around and said, she's not pretty enough, um, talking about the model. And they actually used stronger words to express their opinions. So um, I was like, wait, what? Um, what am I supposed to do now? And they just told me to like cut the head, uh, just show like the product. Mm. Um, And that really hit me because uh, I feel a bit embarrassed that I, I didn't stop them or um, like stop working with them. So, um, and I think about it a lot, actually. Um, I'm glad it happened because I really needed that slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand that because I feel like sometimes you're aware of certain issues, but it just takes one moment, like this aha moment where you're like, this needs to change and yeah. rather than just complaining about it or like being upset about it we have yeah. a tool to actually show diversity which i for me also was like at some point it was very clear that i wanted to not just show things that are necessarily just pretty but have some sort of message behind them and combine that visual language like saying something important through visual language that that's why i think your your photos are so Not just pretty, but important, you know? They I mean, show... what is beauty? Yeah, um, exactly. Like, what is our perception of beauty? Why do we think a certain thing yeah. is pretty and the other thing isn't? Like, um, we need. I think it's so important to broaden that. And oftentimes people don't know certain things, haven't seen certain images. So they 
they don't feel drawn to them in the first place. But yeah. I feel like the more we see, the more diversity we see, the more we expose to different yeah, humans. Thing. You know, we <laughs> get a different understanding. So what was the um, inspiration behind the project you made for the residency fund? Um, I worked with Catherine Iceman and the Adobe Lightroom team, and they wanted me to create and share 20 discover files. Um, a discover file is like an interactive learning feature and people can basically follow um, someone's editing step by step. They see all the metadata. They can save a preset and paste it onto their own images, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Um, and they wanted me to use photos of people with visible differences. Um, so I was really happy about that project because it's what I love doing. Yes. So you have been doing these projects as your personal projects, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. And how do you find inspiration for your personal projects? Like, because I find it really interesting how people like not just come up with the concept, but like the actual idea and how they want to shoot it. Like, for example, with the flowers or the concept, like how, do, how is your process coming up with ideas like that? Um, I feel like I find inspiration everywhere I go, but I'm mostly inspired by music. Mm -hmm. um, I try to go on morning walks and just listen to music, uh, look at people, people at the park, like anywhere. Um, and then sometimes uh, ideas pop up, but um, there's no pressure, but especially with music, um, it's such a personal thing to me. Uh, so I can't really explain why I'm inspired by a certain song. Yeah. No, I can, I can completely relate. Like, do you listen to music when you shoot or when you work? Yes. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. We had this conversation with Amelie Satska another time, uh, where we also talked about music being such a great inspiration for, um, For photography, uh, Karina, by the way, says that she loves your work and your artistic approach. Ah, thank you. And, <laughs> hello. Um, <laughs> yes, we're going to say some hellos to the people in the chat. I completely forgot because I jumped right into your projects. So Linda is here. Gareth is here. Someone called Tim. Not sure who that guy is. Um, Robert, Sean, Sandrine, Jackie. So we have a full house today. And I think Tim mentioned quickly um, what the residency fund is because I've been referring to it like twice now. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a program that Adobe is running where um, artists can apply with a project or for a commission um, to get support for I think a month. Um, so yeah, it's a project that is run by Adobe where you can apply for either a commission or you pitch them your personal project to get financial support on that um and that i did that last year and anna did it recently i don't know i don't know yeah, exactly which year. yeah so that is the residency fund yeah tim who exactly we don't know who tim is if ever if someone <laughs> in the chat can explain to me who tim is that would be great <laughs> okay so you want to explain a little bit more um, about these four photos? Is there anything else you want people to know about them? Um, the the blue one is, uh, her name's Megan. Mm -hmm. uh, she is five, I think. Um, mm. She's got Down syndrome, uh, doesn't talk, but it doesn't mean that she doesn't communicate. Um, you just have to sometimes find out how to communicate with someone with like a speech impairment mm -hmm. um and we did uh we shot this in plymouth um during lockdown Oops. <laughs> mm -hmm. um and yeah it was it was just really cool because, yeah um she was just really sweet How do you make people in front of your camera be so comfortable? Because all like from everything that I've seen so far, these people seem so relaxed and calm and almost as if they're not posing in a way. Like you can see it's a very natural 
thing they don't it doesn't look like you put them on a pedestal and they're just like holding a pose it's just very natural <laughs> and how do you get people to be so natural in front of your camera um i think for me the most important part is to get a personal connection and you only get that personal connection if you actually care about them so i always want to know who they are i want to know their favorite color their favorite song or animal or a favorite song to dance to um mm. i like you always need to you need to listen to them and just get very personal and most importantly be yourself like don't put on a show yeah um even if it's a big project just like do whatever just be yourself <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's like because i don't know how long does a shoot for you take because for me the time before the shoot or the time getting to know the person and creating a safe space just takes more time sometimes than the actual photo itself um i don't know how you do it or like how long do you usually shoot with people when you it always depends um yeah. i usually have stages and the first stage is excitement and i prepare everything mood board um concept whatever um i think i'm prepared and then i take the first couple of pictures i go through them on my camera and panic and then yes. i'm like oh my god who who do i think i am um yeah. and then i like i don't know like calm down and yeah. um it always depends on the project yeah You just talked about mood boards real quick because I have the exact same thing where I make a mood board and I'm like, oh, these images all look so good. And then I try to yep. create something <laughs> that is kind of the mood board and completely panic and freak out because I'm like, this is not, this does not look like the mood board at all. Yeah. It's not going well. Exactly. Um, why can I not just do what I was like, what I wanted to and then just... I don't know, having to let go, I guess. What do you do when you feel like that? Do you just work through it and try to make it work? Or do you then decide to just change the direction and go wherever you like were on the path already? Or do you change the direction again? Um, I always say just vibe it, whatever feels best. Um, one thing I learned, and I'm still trying to kind of learn uh, not to... Um, I don't know, like get obsessed with an idea and then mm. find out it's not going to work because it happens a lot. So um, just try different things, especially with uh, shooting in natural light because you never know what happens. <laughs> That is true. That is true. Do you usually shoot in natural light or also with yeah, no, studios? Yeah, natural stuff? light. Yeah. No artificial light. <laughs> not at all? At all. Is that a personal <laughs> choice? Um, I'm just, I just, I don't know. I want to be easy. And um, so especially with people with special needs, mm -hmm. um, you can't, you, you never know. Someone might not like all the lights, um, but everyone's used to daylight. Yeah. So I feel like it's easier. Um, I work with kids a lot. They cannot sit still. <laughs> so um it's almost impossible to um have artificial light that's true yeah that is something i would never really take into consideration but you're absolutely right but i also um understand the fact that if you put people in front of a flash or like a big strobe or something i can see their posture changes like yeah. you can see that they're now realizing i'm in front of a camera i'm being photographed and through that thought process change how they behave yeah um and i think maybe that is a bit easier if you're outside because it's not so obvious that you're now in front of a camera because you're in your normal i don't know space habitat yeah. <laughs> you're not yeah that's so true <laughs> not in this white background <laughs> everything's clean please take off your shoes kind of space so I do, um, I, I do understand that. I'm shooting for the first time outside again in a few weeks and I'm like, oh my God, the weather, what am I going to do about the weather? I'm so stressed about it now. Work it into um, the pictures. 
Yeah, yeah, no. people felt it. it's <laughs> raining. <laughs> so I will need some tips for good um, outside sh shots. Um, do you shoot a specific time of the day then, or you just see what happens? See what happens. Wow, I'm really impressed <laughs> with people that can like wing it like that because I'm like everything needs to be planned. I need to know what's going to happen. I need to be able to control the light, control that it's not like inside and not outside. And the whole outside aspect is really stressing me out. It is stressing, but then um, I don't know. It starts to rain, and I'm like, why am I like this? Why didn't I plan? Um, <laughs> yeah second mood board for rainy days yeah yeah now shooting outside i'm like oh should i have like a plan b plan c do i need to have multiple scenarios for that yeah. um okay so you wanna what are the other photos i'm really interested in the green photo because i find it so cool so interesting and so nice so his name's mac uh he's got down syndrome as well and he was just this the sweetest guy. Um, it was also shot in Plymouth uh, in the south. Um, and he, I think he's 21. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't really talk, not even to his parents. Um, but he was so patient, let me do anything and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a lot of fun and he this was shot in his very, very tiny um, bedroom with a small window. Um, I didn't really know what to do about the light. So um, the green-ish background is actually a blue wall because uh, that's his favorite color. I felt kind of bad for not making the, the picture uh, blue in the end, but um, I went with green. <laughs> um, and he basically did um, whatever he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was really cool just to see him like that. Yeah. Is it for you, like, what is the difference if you have someone in front of your camera that you can't talk to? Like, how do you, what is the difference of like shooting with people with special needs? Um, what is your experience? Because well, just because someone doesn't talk doesn't mean you can't communicate. So you know, you need to kind of find out a way to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. um, it might be through their parents or um, a friend or whoever. Um, and sometimes you don't even need to talk a lot. Um, I can't really explain how we did that shoot, but it all just worked out so well <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i feel like it's just about maybe like creating this space where people feel comfortable yeah which i think it's such an maybe even underrated skill of photographers because we talk so much about gear and lighting and technical things and cameras but if you are really good at like putting someone at ease or just making them feel comfortable or even, I don't know, creating this environment that you want to take the photo in, regardless of what yeah. that might be, but to be able to create a connection with someone. I think that mm -hmm. is so important and it's never really talked about or at least I don't know people talking much about it. I think photography is always more of like a technical thing, it but is, it's so yeah. much... So much goes into um, <laughs> how you communicate with the people because you can have yeah. the greatest gear if the person in front of your camera looks like you're about to shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> like, not just with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, I have nothing. I've got um, I've got a camera and two lenses, very <laughs> cheap lenses, but that's honestly all I need. Yeah. Um, I agree. If a client wants me to use different lenses, they might have budget for that. Yeah, you can rent everything. Yeah. I've, I've rent stuff all the time. I also, for the longest time, shot with a camera that I'm not even going to name here because people are like, 
not super cheap. It was definitely yeah. under a thousand euros <laughs> for a really, really long time. <laughs> But people don't know because it's about the emotion that comes across, I think, rather than the pixels, I guess. And all my photos have not been on billboards. So there was never a problem when it came to like how many <laughs> megapixels my photos have. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> We have a question in the chat. Sean is asking, how long do some of these shoots last? Like, how long does it take to take these images? Um, all of them, all of these ones um, were probably under an hour. Hmm. That's um, Megan on the uh, left, my left. I don't know if it's also your left. <laughs> the blue one. Um, That is my left. Yes. So... Um, she was she was very fast she was just running around um forever um i did panic a little bit about it because i was like mm. <laughs> 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 um but definitely under an hour um sometimes um you just need to figure out a way to get your photos um even if people are moving <laughs> yeah i guess with that a lot of light helps because you can just like go high on the shutter and then just yeah away, basically that was shot in uh very harsh sunlight actually yeah. through a blue folder oh wow oh i thought it was like sheets or something no it was um one of those like plasticky things <laughs> Um, we have another question that I think is really interesting. Sandrina is asking, do people react more when you show them the result of an image, for example, on your screen, on your camera, and then are able to better understand what you need from them? Does that help with nonverbal people? Um, yeah, and also um, I'm interested in the reaction you get when you show these images too. Yes, people. it does help. But also one thing I learned is... Uh, just because someone doesn't talk, it doesn't mean that they can't listen. Um, so they hear, they can hear you, um, unless they've got a hearing impairment as well. But um, if you explain it um, and then show them the mood board, uh, that always helps. And then the final, the final pictures or yeah, half final, <laughs> <laughs> semi final, <laughs> yeah. Um, Angus is saying that it's all about knowing your subject and consider the individual and not the condition or disability. And I think yes. that's really important as well. Yeah. Exactly. Do you feel like it helps the people if you show them what you have like on your camera or do you rather not show them because you don't want them to, I don't know, be insecure or mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I think I always, um, I'm always open to showing them. Um, I hardly ever um like do it myself they would be like oh can I see and then I'm like yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah I, I actually it depends but usually I show it as well because I feel like at least if I'm doing a good job and the photos mm -hmm. look good that the people feel more empowered and a little bit more let go a little bit more yeah but I'm like this is looking good you're doing great so look at this, <laughs> this looks amazing so yeah. that they're like oof okay it's I'm doing a good job. I can relax a little bit. I don't have to be so yeah, tense. Yeah, make it fun. Yeah, absolutely. I know people that don't want to show the photos during the shoot at all. Huh. Like, no, mm -mm, you'll see it when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you have some more photos? You I do. Um, yes. I wanted to show you my um, first shoot with a child with Down syndrome because I think that is the project that personally touched me most yes. um even though um all shoots touch me personally but yeah. um that one was the one that touched me most um it was for a german magazine called kids war magazine and it had been on my list for a very long time <laughs> um and it was one of the things i i got in touch with the magazine and just reached out to them, sent them my portfolio, and they replied with, um, yeah, thank you, but maybe check back in one year. Um, 
we're not looking for any photographers at the moment, but things might change, which for me is a very polite note. Yeah, I was about to say like, yeah. no, it's <laughs> like, uh, okay, thank you. Um, but I, um, I did actually um, reach out again after a year and um, sent them some new stuff and they were like, oh my God, this is perfect. Um, do you have time to shoot for us? And I got really excited and said, uh, yeah, um, but they needed the, the pictures within like four days. Um, and I had just moved to London um, mm. and I really wanted to do this with Sophia um, because I found her, her mom's uh, or her family's Instagram account. Um, and I don't know, I just, I just really wanted to do it with her but they're based in San Francisco. So I was like, oh no, uh, what do I do? I really want to do it. But um, there's not a lot of time. Um, and then I uh, got in touch with them. They said they would love to do it. Um, and I was at one point I was like, oh my God, like, what are you doing? Um, probably on the plane. <laughs> um, you and- flew to San Francisco? I did. Um, in 2019 um and i had a mood i had a beautiful mood board with um like really amazing photos um from my favorite favorite photographers um because i thought um it would be super nice and sunny but then it actually it was raining um a lot (laughs) um and i think you can actually see it in some of the photos um but I was very far from my comfort zone. Well, that's amazing. Also, before I forget, before I start, jump into the questions, because I know I always forget. So the chat is like going crazy about these photos. They all love them. Then it says, it's lovely images. So cute. Sandrine, cute. Cute. So lovely. Everyone <laughs> loves this project. It, and I love the first ones, especially that you showed these where she's like holding her sweater up. Um, they look so, so cute. cute. So cute in the pants. <laughs> oh, my oh my god, I love her like overall. That's so <laughs> cute. I would wear that totally. Yeah. <laughs> um so first question, I think it's so cool. So you reached out to a magazine, it didn't work out, and you just followed up and it did work out because I think a lot of people get discouraged or think it's not worth it like I do the exact same someone's like nope and I'm like okay never mind I was not even here I didn't even ask I don't want to ever okay bye Um, yeah no that is my number one tip reach out to people don't be afraid um like what's gonna happen (laughs) I think for me what I hate the most because I'm also about yes I have to reach out to people you have to do the whole self-promotion you have to be like hey that's me how about we just work together um (laughs) the two things i don't like about it one when i have to like follow up because someone sends you a message saying yes cool let's do something and then you don't hear back and you're then like um excuse me um just (laughs) asking again (laughs) what is going on and if you don't get an answer at all I'm like "Mm." happens a lot happens I mean I want to say nine out of ten times at least for me where you're like nothing's happening I guess this (laughs) went into the spam folder um and my question is like how do you um power through or like what keeps you going what is your how do you keep motivated um that is a really good question um because like you said like you don't want to be um like cocky or you don't want to have like an attitude about it um so it always took me a while to kind of realize um it's okay to reach out to people and people actually like it um I just recently got an email from someone I had messaged probably a year ago and she was like oh my god I'm so sorry I just found this in my spam and oh my god yes let's do it um so I don't know you never know Mm. some people might find it rude but then um it's fine 
I mean, it's, I guess it's also about the tone of how yeah. you send messages, which I think it's also very difficult in the beginning for people to find out what do you want to put in this email? Because my problem always was that people tell you you have to do it. They tell you you have to network, you have to send out your portfolio, you have to do all these things. Yeah. And then I find myself sitting in front of the computer, having on my to-do list, reaching out to people, and I'm sitting there being like, what am I going to say? Like, yeah. <laughs> hi, it's me. I take photos. Hire yeah. me. <laughs> like, and I think that is something um, where people just have to find their own tone, I guess. Yeah. At least that's my experience of like, be nice, be polite, don't make spelling mistakes, stuff like that. Very simple, but yeah, um, same. Um, it's not easy. But with this one, um, it was it was so worth it. Um, yeah. You can see the rain in these ones i think <laughs> yeah but rain we can see rain. that she's like playing with the rain and stuff i guess she's so cute she's my biggest inspiration <laughs> she looks so cute and we can see linda also says that you like she can see that you clearly establish a connection with the subject which she says is tricky with kids I'm happy about that Thank which you. i guess you you know a lot about because you take a lot of photos of kids um no but i love these photos i think they look so and that's what i mean when like or from the beginning when i said that it looks so natural it looks so calm and relaxed it doesn't look like she's posing in front of a camera she's just being herself and you take photos while she's playing outside and that's so lovely to see it's just so raw and um i think yeah, already just it. different from people just posing in front of a camera i don't like um I don't like posing. I mean, it always depends, but um, I think it's more fun if it's just um, like a moment kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the clothes oh. are really cool. Yeah, they sent yeah. me everything um, and I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it looks really, how, do you, how did you find the location? How do you do that? If you shoot a lot outside, how do you go about um, like location scouting? So I found Sophia on Instagram and I think I found a a photo of her and her mom um, on the beautiful like ranch kind of thing. Mm. And the sun was golden. Everything was beautiful. <laughs> so um, I said, this is it. <laughs> Our mood board was like um, red um yellow, yellow sunny orangey very sunny <laughs> got there <laughs> it was raining for three days straight no that's not what you fly to california for i guess yeah, <laughs> yeah it was very bad <laughs> but i guess even like also circling back from the beginning that just goes to show that sometimes the best results come if you don't plan them maybe yeah. i don't i don't want to admit that that's true because then all my excessive planning is basically a waste sometimes um Just but it out is of your comfort zone i think yeah that is true pushing out of your comfort zone um usually gets good results that is true i don't know if i have another one of these or yeah this one is the last no. one I think. i'm not sure um oh these ones oh, i love the like the soft lighting as well and i think that's also because maybe that was not bright sunlight it was it was foggy <laughs> yeah <laughs> and now we're just gonna interpret this as like super nice soft light a little bit cloudy yes <laughs> completely intentional this is absolutely how we play yeah that's what i wanted <laughs> exactly I did panic a little bit actually um, after the shoot and probably um, I don't know it yeah. was just a disaster <laughs> yeah I know the panic I know I also feel like every time I send over photos to a client it's like throwing a bomb into a room and then running yes. running away really quickly and then just like peeking through like whenever I get an email, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm not, I'm not gonna open yeah, the email. Yeah, I was so worried about it, um, yeah. especially because they they got back to me with, um, I can't remember, but it was like good feedback. But then I was like, mm, 
is that like what you actually think <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know the feeling um also kirsty said it's good to have a plan but like also happy accidents happen which yeah. i guess sums it up quite nicely mm -hmm. um but yeah i completely agree with this and then they say like yeah looks great and you're like okay um is that all <laughs> is that they're, it <laughs> they're more coming yeah <laughs> no okay <laughs> but i feel it also sometimes for me when i look at images for a really long time like when i work on a project for a long time it just for me personally it's hard to then see the image with a fresh eye yeah same so i'm like this doesn't look good anymore it's the same thing if you say a word all over and over and over again it sounds weird to you at some point yeah so <laughs> if you look at an image for too long i'm like is this get it out of my sight <laughs> is does this look good i don't know yeah. <laughs> i completely understand that um way of <laughs> thinking whenever we're working with a client but I think it's amazing and I think it's very inspiring that you reached out to a magazine that you picked out people you want to work with reached out to them followed up I think it just goes to show that hard work and dedication if you want something you just have to like follow that not to be super cheesy and be like follow your dreams blah blah but you need yeah. to you know like put in the work up. sorry <laughs> I interrupted you no, it just said, um, don't give up. Um, exactly. even though sometimes um, you get like bad um, answers or no answers at all. Um, yeah. Keep yeah. Pushing. Yeah. I, and I feel like oftentimes what we see is how people share the good things. I mean, nobody puts on their website or social media or whatever, all the rejections they got. Yeah. Because I mean, <laughs> maybe I will start to put like next to my brands I have worked with section on my website, brands that love have rejected that. me and have never I answered. Love that actually. <laughs> like because I mean, so often we think we see people um and we think, "Oh my god, they're so successful and everything seems to be going well." And I think oftentimes, at least for me, oh, how many times no answer, bad answer or like really mean answer like all of these things they happen out of yeah out of 10 emails maybe maybe one is nice yeah <laughs> um and that's just Still. i guess normal it's that's the industry easy. yeah um the only thing that i feel like helps me is to have this mindset of one day i'm gonna tell the story where people are gonna be like oh damn i wish i would have um answered her yeah and I'm like yeah and now look at me now I don't and, want you anymore <laughs> exactly and now if you ask me now if you follow up on this email that I sent you five years ago <laughs> I just recently actually thought about that um so no maybe I would work with them maybe yeah. not yeah <laughs> maybe I'll so, let them wait <laughs> yeah I don't know if that's a very juvenile way of thinking of it but I'm still like yeah you one day one day you'll be like Ah, I wish I would have said yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Um, to cope with that rejection. Hmm. But here we are. So we did something right. So hmm. that's good to know. Um, do you want to show us another project or do you want me to yes. like ask you some more questions or should we do both? Um, I've got another project, but I'm and always jump into the project questions so this one is a very personal project um probably one of my favorite so far um it's called the story i heard and i took these pictures in 2019 i think in london you're like pre-covid that's why all these people yeah. are smiling <laughs> pre-covid um in my old apartment building and i just wanted to get group shots with all kinds of people uh, i didn't really have a mood board for this um and the light was not very great the light looks <laughs> great in these images <laughs> I was about to say, did you have like sunlight coming through a window or something? I did not. It was very dark. <laughs> it 
Is that all post production? Um, I mean, I mean, it wasn't like super dark, but it was it wasn't great light. Okay. Uh, but looks great. Work it into <laughs> pictures. Um, some of these people are my friends. Mm -hmm. Um, some are from an agency called Zebedee. Um, probably the most amazing agency I've ever worked with. I love working with them. Um, they've got models of all backgrounds, all abilities. Um, so, yeah. We have some questions on that middle yes. image. Yes. So we, first question is how much work, it's kind of the question I asked, um, how much is done in camera and how much is post-production? Um, to be honest, um, this is probably more post-production. Um, I cropped it. I gave it a bit of uh, the light thing. Um, and then that like weird greenish blue. I don't know what the color is. <laughs> I would say green. Yeah. Um, then I did a little blur. Um, but I didn't edit any of the of the faces because um, I just I don't know it's not yeah something I do and then anymore. not anymore. <laughs> the another question was what f stop was used on the one in the center because I guess when you have a lot of people you can't really open up the lens too much because otherwise someone's not in focus anymore. So I know that this one was shot with my very cheap Tamron. <laughs> Uh, lens and the f stop was probably, I don't know, eight. I, yeah, I was about to say like at least six. Yeah, definitely, definitely like eight, seven, eight, something like that. Yeah, um, because otherwise the person in the back that's leaning wouldn't be in focus anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not all like, uh, it's not a very like sharp, sharp image anyway. But yeah, but I think it's. Great, because it's just not about that. Mm -hmm. It's once again something where I feel like it's more about the picture than about, mm -hmm. like, even if something would be out of focus, that was would totally fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like that. Is that a curtain in the back? Yes. Okay, yeah. It's my old apartment building. It's the gallery um, with, um, like, very large uh, windows and high walls, oh. high ceiling. It looks um, nice. And just to um, go back to something that you just said that you don't retouch faces or like you don't touch retouch uh um like I guess what people would see as like imperfections. Not anymore. I used to. I used to be obsessed with <laughs> clear skin. <laughs> <laughs> um but now I'm like um I mean I, I would definitely ask people if um they want their face to have to be like retouched um i would edit like dry skin um mm -hmm. or especially around the mouth or, um, and nose um that's the kind of things i would do mm. i think yeah, i think i don't i keep forgetting who said that to me but i thought it was so such a good tip um, that if something is still there in two weeks, I'll leave it. Yeah, that's so good. That's yeah, gone in two weeks. Like just I don't know. Yeah, like you said, dry skin or I don't know, a little red spot. Will be <laughs> I would definitely me. remove like I don't know dirt. Um, yeah, especially kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> the dirt from the face. You never know. Yeah. Um, and then I've got these ones, I think. Oh. I mean, the group shots are so random, I think. I really like them. I recently took a group shot and now I can appreciate how hard it is to arrange people. It's insane. <laughs> we had a shoot with um, five models and we had to, and they were also really different in height. So we had to like, someone had to like kneel and some other one had, were standing and you're like, can you put your head closer? And it's yeah, <laughs> hours of us just being like, no, can you go to the right? No, can you come around? Like, 
oh, it's so much work to actually compose images like this, yeah. I think. Yeah, Andrea says it's such a great photo and I completely agree. And I think Thank it was so the first or like the middle one, but they're all great. So. <laughs> I love this the little girl with the purple glasses. She's so cute. <laughs> so cute. Oh my God. <laughs> and also so confident. I feel like, I don't know, because you take photos of a lot of kids. Do you feel like kids are more confident because they don't? They don't are. Know, yeah, they just don't care. As they much. just don't care at all. Yeah. Um, I always try to make it fun and um, I would never force them to pose. Um, I always ask what they want to do. Yeah. Or maybe, you, sorry. <laughs> is there something that you would like take away from taking photos of kids? Like if you, something that you maybe, maybe we forget as we get older and we can learn something from small kids posing in front of the camera, even if you shoot with adults. Do yes. You think? Yes. yes. Care less and be more yes. yourself. <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah. And I guess that's something that absolutely shows in these images. Like, look at her go with her little purple glasses. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I love that. These are um, the last ones from this project. That's amazing. Um, then I have one question. It's a bit of a, a bigger question. And a lot of your work is about diversity and representation. And um, where do you want photography and representation to go in the future? What do you think we can do as photographers and creatives to further this discussion? Um, what do you want to see in the future? Um, yeah. What, what can we do and what would be the ideal scenario? Um, that is a very hard question, first of all, but I think we have to be more open-minded and learn to listen. Um, that is, for me, the most important thing. Um, and create a like an environment where everyone feels safe like not just in in media, um, but in life. Like we have to see the bigger picture. Um, and this uh, project is called The Story I Heard because um, when you think about someone with a disability, you immediately think about all the things they can't do or you think, um, you know someone with um, like in a wheelchair um, but not everyone in a wheelchair has the same story. Um, you might think you know what living with a disability um, looks like, but you don't. Um, so I think we sometimes we just need to listen and ask questions instead of making assumptions and then just stop judging. Mm -hmm. If that I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> that does answer the question. Um, because I completely agree that, and I'm going to um, curse for a quick assumption is the mother of all fuck ups, um, yes. that you should never assume something. And that photography is just storytelling, basically. Like if you, you can, and it can even be like a fashion shoot or something editorial, but if you tell a story through that and yeah. incorporate different realities, different identities, within that art form, I think for me is super interesting and so important because um, it has such a huge power representation in the media. We, um, I think as someone that is sees herself, for example, in media all the time, we sometimes take it for granted. But if you talk yeah. to people that don't see themselves um, or if they do, they are like weak or not, not alongside proper proper models or something you know they're always this special treatment kind of case or something but if you just represent realities the same as everyone else that's such a powerful tool that gives so much empowerment to so many people yeah. so i think it's such a great tool and yeah the question is like what is your dream project for the future what do you want to do putting it out into the universe, manifesting and all that stuff. <laughs> I'm actually working on a dream project soon. 
that's amazing. Can you share a little bit about it? It's with a fashion brand. Um, kids. But I'll uh, shoot it next month, I think. Ooh, exciting. Um, it is also, um, um, how do I explain that? So I, I emailed them. I found the creative director for uh, the kids division um, on LinkedIn, I think, maybe a year ago, and just emailed her. And um, I kind of forgot about it, but then seven months after, seven months after, um, she replied and she was like, oh my God, I found this is my, this in my spam. Um, let's do it. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> is this happening? Dang. But yeah, so always reach out to people. That's absolutely amazing. Um, so we're reaching the last 10 minutes. Time flies. Where did fast. I feel like <laughs> live streams is a t different time zone. Yeah. An hour here is not a complete hour. Um, I just want to, before we wrap it up, two things. First thing, people can, where can people find your work? I think we have your um, Instagram handle on your name somewhere, but I guess Tim can also put your website in the chat. There it is. <laughs> as well. Um, and hmm, any final thoughts? I'm tr really trying because I'm like, debating myself we should ask one other question or that this is gonna stretch it but I, I still i'm still gonna do it so we have lockdown and everyone's dealing with lockdown how have you been dealing with it and any tips for people to get through this tough time how have you been dealing with it last year just as a final question for today um i went for a lot of walks <laughs> i walked a lot um I had some time um, to take self-portraits and had time for myself. So it was it was good, I think. Um, I did get bored because there's nothing to do. But then I also spent like three months um, in the south at the beach, my boyfriend's family's house. <laughs> so it's nice. It was really nice. Cool. So I think any final thoughts before we start wrapping it up? Um, no. No? Okay, <laughs> then I'm just gonna tell people a little bit about something um, that we're doing next week. That's the portfolio review, which is uh, gonna happen with Natalie and Bruno next Friday. So if you want your work to be reviewed, you can do that in the Discord. We have an extra Discord channel that is called Portfolio Review. And you can send in your work. It can be illustrate, illustrations, um, graphic design, photography, um, and it will be selected and reviewed next Friday. And I think the deadline is Monday. So you have the rest of the weekend to send over your work and the schedule for next week already a little preview sneak peek for next week we have ember joining us on monday i'm gonna be back on monday with ember we're gonna talk about photoshop and photography so that's gonna be interesting on wednesday we have sarah j coleman and tony joining us for a brush master class and on Friday, like I said, we have the portfolio review. So don't miss that. And Anna, thank you so much for sharing your projects and joining us on the live stream. It was a pleasure talking to you. And I can't wait to see all the next projects that you can do. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Um, have a great weekend. Uh, thanks for joining everyone. I hope you have a great Friday and a wonderful weekend and i hope to see you on monday bye bye